Uh, good morning, students. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have studied that in total three chapters we have studied, and this is the fourth chapter, energy and potential. First chapter was vector analysis, right? And there we have studied the three coordinate systems: rectangular coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate system, and spherical coordinate system, right? Conversion from one system to another system. All those things we have studied, and also the important aspects of vectors that also we have studied, right? Dot product, cross product, all those things. Then in chapter two, that is Coulomb's law and electric field intensity, we have, we have seen the types of charge distribution. That is point charge, line charge, surface charge, and volume charge. And we have found out the electric field intensity due to all these four types of charge distributions using Coulomb's law that we have seen, right? Then in chapter three, that is electric flux density, Gauss law, and divergence, right? Once again, we have made use of instead of uh, making use of Coulomb's law, we have made use of Gauss law. Uh, in order to derive the expression for electric flux density d due to point charge coaxial cable right we have seen it okay next in this chapter that is energy and potential chapter 4 unit 2 what we are going to study just i have listed out the uh, uh, syllabus here the energy expended in moving a point charge in an electric field i have a electric field the source of electric field may be any charge it may be point charge line charge a surface charge a volume charge right that is the source of electric field if i want to move any if i want to move any test charge right in that electric field whether it may be in the direction of the field or against of the field or perpendicular to the direction of the field right what is the energy spent that we will be calculating and line integral once again it is related to the energy expended in moving a point charge if i want to move the charge from one point to another point in the field what is that line integral we'll see then next we will try to introduce the new concept that is definition of potential difference and potential right in the previous chapters uh, we have made use of coulomb's law and uh, gauss law in order to define or calculate the electric field intensity due to various types of charge distributions here in this chapter we will introduce the third method right another method and instead of using coulomb's law or that is gauss law we will go for the third method how to find out the electric field intensity or electric field due to the other other types of charge distributions that we will be seeing by introducing the concept of potential and potential difference then what is the potential field due to a point charge we will derive an expression for that and what is the potential field due to the system of charges means group of charges what is the potential field that we will be seeing then the conservative property associated with the these charges we'll see there then what the new concept that is potential gradient we'll be studying what is potential gradient in detail then what is the energy density in an electrostatic field right where the energy is stored energy is stored in the field that we are going to study in this chapter all those things okay in lecture 25 what we are going to cover today is the introduction and the energy expended in moving a point charge in an electric field energy expended is nothing but energy spent right that we will be studying introduction right for example why this energy and potential concept is required that we will see suppose we have the two unlike charges these two unlike charges i have two unlike charges one is positive charge let me draw it here okay one is positive charge plus q and one is negative charge minus q then if there is only positive charge i could have chosen the gaussian surface the spherical surface right but there is positive charge as well as negative charge right so i cannot choose the gaussian surface for this this type of uh, two unlike charges are there this we call it as asymmetrical charges right so i cannot choose the proper gaussian surface so we uh, gaussian law cannot be applied in uh, here in this case in order to find out the electric field intensity but we can go with the coulomb's law but it is quite tedious and laborious but we can find out the electric field intensity due to these two unlike charges that we can find out right okay i have two unlike charges and i will consider this is source points these are the source point and field point i will consider somewhere here and i want to find out what is the electric field intensity at this point field point due to this two unlike charges by coulomb's law we can do it but that is quite laborious so in this chapter we will find out the another method to find out the electric field intensity at So this field point due to this two unlike charges are asymmetrical charge distribution that will be seen so the known methods are coulomb's law and gauss law but gauss law fails in this case uh, two unlike charges but coulomb's law is quite laborious so we are going to introduce the third method of finding the electric fields using the concept of potential and potential difference right and one more thing this chapter will form the basis for the third method of finding electric fields means 
yes what is the third method the third method will be involving what right now you will not understand later on you will understand so the third method it includes single scalar integration potential is a new concept it is a scalar quantity potential so we will integrate single scalar integration followed by pleasant differentiation right one integration and one differentiation will be there in order to find out the electric field intensity using this third method that we will see it later right but if i make use of columns law what will happen because there are if i consider three dimensional coordinate system three components x component y component means three integrations will be coming instead of three integration it is better to go for single integration a single scalar integration followed by pleasant difference this differentiation may be pleasant or unpleasant it depends right but they are calling it as pleasant differentiation let it be, that we'll see it later right okay first we'll see the energy will try to find out the energy spent or energy expended in moving a point charge in an electric field suppose i have the electric fields here yes this is the field in this direction from left to right these are the field lines so this is the electric field then i will be taking the test charge q test charge this test charge q it can be moved in the direction in the direction of this test charge let me take plus q here it can be moved in the direction of the field or against the field or perpendicular to the field right i can move either in the direction of the field or against the direction of the field or perpendicular to the field there are three cases we'll see it right okay we have considered the plus uh, test charge plus q and i want to move uh, against the direction through a small distance dl uh, in the direction of unit vector al right so this is a small distance deal differential length i want to move against the field a yeah. let me see what is the amount of energy spent or what is the work done or amount of en see work done and energy energy spent they are correlated that we'll see it right so what is the energy expended or spent in order to move the test charge either in the direction of the field or against the field or perpendicular to the field right okay this is the field i told so what is the source of the field we are not worried about the source there is a field i am telling but if you take this case second diagram there is a point charge here plus q right the field lines you can see here in all the 360 de degree direction the field lines are there this is the source of the field this is the source of the field is this this is the source point this is the source of the field here in this case what may be the source of the field if i want to get it it is maybe infinite line charge infinite line charge may be there here but we are not worried about the source just i am taking the field lines directly here here i am showing the source right these are the field lines then i will consider the test charge here i here, here i can move the charge either in the direction of the field like this or against the direction of the field or perpendicular cutting right perpendicular to the direction of the field all those things these three cases here but we'll concentrate on the diagram one and we'll try to find out the energy spent in moving a point charge in an electric field okay we know the definition of electric field intensity what is so force acting on unit positive test charge right force acting on unit positive test charge. this we know right this is by definition of electric field intensity yes and we have taken this is the electric field e and this is the test charge we want to move a small distance of dl in the along the direction of al and what is the force experienced by this test charge in the field the force experienced by the test charge in the field means fe why this e means the force experienced by this test charge in the field so in the field means so it e fe or else simply i can write f f vector so f is equal to q into e by definition of electric field force for force acting on unit positive charge what is f f is equal to q into e so the same thing by definition of electric field intensity f is equal to q into e i can write that amount the test charge q and the electric field intensity e will give me this is giving me the force experienced by the test charge in the field in the electric field q e right then i want to move this test charge by a small distance dl in the direction of unit vector al right then i the def, the then the magnitude of the force in order to move the charge f e l means only i am not taking the uh, vector observe here this is the magnitude is equal to the force that is experienced by the charge and it is moving in the direction of al vector so f into al can i write this the dot product of two vectors is a scalar quantity f e l f e f e indicates the force experienced by the charge in the field and l indicates in the it is moved in the direction of al vector right so f e l this is the magnitude of the force and it is uh, expressed by the dot product of two vectors f vector into a l vector is the unit vector in the direction of dl vector 
right then what is this f f is equal to q into e substitute f is equal to q into e q into e into al vector i hope you understood this right and al is the unit vector in the direction of dl vector right this is the force experienced by the charge in the electric field e right then suppose right this is the force experienced by the charge in the field if i want to move the charge either in the direction of the field or against the direction of the field or perpendicular to the field the force that should be applied in order to move the charge should be equal and opposite to the force experienced by the charge in the field right it should be. this is the force experienced by the charge q e a l right so what is the force that should be applied in order to move the charge either in the direction of the field or against or perpendicular it should be equal and opposite that is f applied we will call it as so the total amount of force that should be applied in order to move the charge right it is equal to the force experienced by the charge in the field that is force experienced q e into a l so it should be equal and opposite so minus sign is coming here minus right i hope you understood why minus sign the total amount of force that should be applied in order to move the charge is it should be equal and opposite so hence we are taking minus here this is q e into a l minus q e into a l i hope you understood this then since we are moving the charge either in the direction of field against or perpendicular so we know we know that wkt means we know that the work done is defined by the force into display force into distance right so in order to move the charge by a small distance dl different through a small distance dl the differential amount of work done the small amount of work done dw is equal to force into distance what is force this one the force applied minus qv into al force into distance dl right this is force into this dl is the distance yes dw is the differential amount of work done so this can be written as in the form of dot product minus q e dot dl see here dl what is dl vector just what is this dl vector the magnitude dl into the unit vector al dl into al this dl into al is nothing but dl vector so e vector dot dl vector I hope you understood this right so the differential amount of work done in order to move the charge through a small distance along the unit vector al is given by minus q e dot dl then i want to find out means this is the small distance so let me assume that this is the initial position initial position then there is a final position i will be taking somewhere here final position i want to move the charge from initial position to final position this is the small distance we have taken what is the total amount of work done integrate from initial position to final position along the right so that we'll see the total amount of work done in order to move a charge through a fi finite distance from initial point to final point is given by use make use of this so this is the differential amount of work total work done means integrate it so w is equal to observe dw to w is equal to minus q yes you can take minus q is the constant integrate along the e dot dl means e dot dl right integrate from initial point to final point init means initial point or initial position final position initial position is here final position is here it can be anywhere here initial position final position i can take it here also no problem right anywhere from here to here if i want to move right final position can be anywhere here i want to move from initial position to final right so for that the total amount of work done is given by the formula minus q integration from initial position of the charge to the final position of the charge in the field e dot dl and the charge is assumed to be at rest at both initial position and final position yes at initial position it is at rest at final position also it is at rest in between it is moving right i hope when we say that the work done is said to be positive the work done is said to be positive work done is said to be negative and work done is said to be zero you know three cases are there the work done right we got the formula w is equal to minus q integration right this minus don't skip this right this minus q indicates why this minus is coming means the applied force should be equal and opposite because of this minus is coming that's all right so the work done since sometimes if i calculate the work done in order to move the charge in the field sometimes we will get positive value sometimes we will get negative value sometimes we will get zero value and in which case we'll see if i move the charge against the field the work done is positive right against against is positive against field if i move the charge in the direction of the field in the direction of the field in the direction of field if i move the charge perpendicular to the field perpendicular to the field 
the work done is zero right because e dot dl yes here dot product if it is because in dot product we will get cost cost 90 right cost 90 is zero so you will get zero if the charge is moved against the field some amount of work has to be done so it is positive if i move the charge in the direction of the field no work is done the field itself will carry that charge so work done no amount no external work should be done so the work done we consider it as negative if the charge is moved in the direction of the field if i want to move the charge against the field i have to do some work so the work done is positive in this case if i move the charge perpendicular to the field then cost 90 is zero because e is in this direction dl will be in this direction so cost theta theta is 90 degree e and dl so theta is 90 degree. cost 90 is zero so the work done is positive if i move the charge against the field the work done is said to be negative if i move the charge in the direction of the field the work done is said to be zero if i move the charge perpendicular to the field i hope you have understood if any doubts are there please unmute yourself and speak to me so that i can clarify your doubts as and when it comes to you right okay okay just we will give the analogy right with respect to this whatever we have studied so gravitation field and the mass if i want to move the mass up and down in an elevator first let me consider gravitational field right always the gravitational field will be acting in the downward direction towards the earth if i take some object right some object is there if i move the object against this is the gravitational field right gravitational field if i want to lift this object lift it against the gravity means the work done is positive here in this case if this object same uh, object is falling down means it is in the direction of the, the work done here in this case is negative then the same object if i carry it and move just perpendicular to the direction of the gravitational field then the work done in this case is zero but i am carrying some weight of this object but that doesn't count as per this definition the work done is zero but the weight will be there but i am moving again perpendicular to the gravitational field the work done is zero i hope you understood this if I lift the object, the work done is positive. If the object is uh, moving in the direction of the gravitational field, the work done is negative. If the object is carried perpendicular to the gravitational field, the work done is zero, right? Then we will consider the second example, mass moving up and down. There is an elevated space like this. There is a, yes, there is some object here. This is the object. Yes, I want to move this object in the upward direction so in this case i have to do some work the work done is positive yes if i want to move the object in this direction right in the downward direction the work done here in this case is negative right so when it is zero don't ask it right so it is either in the upward direction or down work done is positive and negative i hope you understood the analogy right okay then we'll solve this problem and uh, we'll wind up the today's lecture and i'll want to discuss the scheme all right and uh, in one or two days i will uh, give your marks also right okay uh, given the electric field e is given okay what is this uh, one by z square i think so this is one i think okay or else the entire problem will be wrong i think this is one only okay given the electric field e is equal to one by z square into eight x y z a x plus four x square z a y minus 4x square y az volt per meter find the differential amount of work done in moving a 6 nano coulomb charge a distance of 2 micron meter starting at point p and proceeding in the direction of al three parts they have given al they have given al is part a this al is part b al is part c we will see all the three cases okay solution of the problem i will write it here only okay electric field e is given and differential we want to find out the differential amount of work done dw not the entire work done dw what is the formula for dw i have it here minus q e into dl that is equal to minus q vector e dot vector dl this formula we have call this as equation one then in charge that is given q is six nano columns six nano 10 power minus nine six nano column distance of two micron meter dl two micron meter micron is 10 power minus six meters and al is given part a we will take a part a al is given al is minus 6 by 7 ax plus 3 by 7 ay plus 2 by 7 az okay part b al is given just observe part b also here it is minus 6 by 7 in part b it is plus 6 by 7 ax 
here it is plus here it is minus here it is plus here it is minus means if i solve part a whatever the differential it will be exactly opposite the unit vector is in the opposite direction so if i solve part a, it is as good as solving part b right so just we'll concentrate on part a so we have this formula minus q e dot dl what is this dl vector dl vector is equal to dl magnitude into al right dl is 2 micron meter and al is given right so substitute and calculate dw is equal to minus q q is how much 6 into 10 power minus 6 then what is e okay we'll write it here uh, at point p also he has given right we can substitute this point also we'll substitute it uh, e dot dl what is e 1 by z square we'll substitute it later uh, into 8 x y z a x plus 4 x square z a y i think this is one only let me check it later minus 4 x square y a z e this is e then dot dl what is this dl dl is equal to dl into al what is this dl 2 into 10 power minus 6 this is dl and what is al it is given so write it minus 6 by 7 ax plus 3 by 7 ay plus 2 by 7 az okay i'll take my calculator before proceeding I hope you also have the calculators okay we'll calculate one by one right first part we'll calculate see here p of this is x y z substitute the value of x by z right starting at p right i'll substitute for e this one here right so x is 2 y is minus 2 z is 3 substitute here in this right so and we'll find out so dw is equal to minus 6 into 10 power minus 9 open bracket so we'll calculate and write so first what i will do 8 x y z divided by z square so 8 into x is how much x is 2 x is 2 y is how much minus 2 z is how much z is 3 z is 3 divided by z square 1 by z square is there so i'll divide and write divided by z square z is 3 square z square is 3 square so I am getting it as minus, I will write the final answer, minus 10 point, minus 10 point, 667, 667, AX, first, first one is over, this one, this one divided by Z square, then I will go for second, 4X square Z, 4 into X square, X square means 2 square, into 4X square Z is how much, 3, Yes, divided by z square z square z is how much 3 3 square so i am getting it as 5.33 5 point plus 5.33 a y the next third one we will calculate minus 4 into x square x square means 2 square 2 square is 4 4 minus x square 4 x square y y is how much minus 2 into minus 2 divided by z square z square is how much z is 3 3 square so i am getting it as 3.55 plus 3.556 let me round it z so this is over this entire thing is over this entire thing we have calculated right Next, we will take up this multiply and write it. Uh, 10 power minus 6, we will take it out. So, 2 into 2 into uh, 2 into minus 6 by 7. Minus 6 divided by 7. So, minus 1.714. Minus 1.714. Minus 1.714. So AX. Next, 3 by 7. 2 into 3 by 7. 3 divided by 7. So I am getting it as 0 0.857. 0 0.857. 0 0.857. 
0.857 ay if i am making any mistakes please correct it or else the entire thing will go wrong so next 2 into 2 by 7 2 divided by 7 so i am getting it as 0 0.571 0 0.571 plus 0.571 az but 10 power minus 6 i have left i will write it here 10 power minus 6 into 10 power minus 6 this you should not leave or else the entire thing will go wrong so now simplify multiply we'll get it right so multiply these components first right My, uh, minus 6 into 10 power minus 9 and this 10 power minus 6 i'll take it out 10 power minus 6 so in the bracket just multiply the components first ax dot ax right this two so minus 10.667 into minus 1.714714 so I'm getting it as 18 point, uh, 18.283. So this is one vector, this is one vector, right? Just take the dot product of two vectors, right? So take the dot product, so just multiply the components. Next, Y components, I will multiply. So 5.33 into 0 0.857, 0 0.857. So I'm getting it as, so plus 4.8. 567, 5678. Then third one, this one, 3.556 into 0.57. 3.556 into 0.571. So I am getting it as 2.030. Okay, let me see what I am getting. So add all these three. Add all these three. 18.283. Plus four point five six seven eight plus two point zero three. Yes, after adding, I am getting twenty four point eight eight. Multiply by minus six into six into six is there. So I am getting it as one forty nine minus as it is one forty nine point two eight four eight minus nine minus six into ten power nine minus fifteen nine plus six right. So, these many joules, the work done is given in terms of joules, these many joules. Though this, this 10 power minus 15 is nothing but femto, they are given in femto joules. They are written as, see, you can observe here, fj, femto joules, right? Minus 149.2848 femto. We read it as femto joules. Femto means 10 power minus 15, femto joules. For part B, no need to calculate because the unit vector AL is exactly opposite. So, DW, I am getting it as plus. Instead of uh, negative minus, you will get positive. 149.2848 femtojoules. Right? So, part B is also over. Part C, I will leave it to you people. You calculate and the answer will turn out to be zero. Right? So, at this moment, I will stop. And uh, if any doubts are there, you can unmute yourself and speak. Before this, uh, I will go to scheme and I will discuss. I want to discuss the scheme of IA. You want to save the changes? Yes. Yes, I will show the scheme and question paper. Just I will discuss the scheme. Yes. Question number 1A. Uh, find the distance between A. This is given in which system? A and B points are given in cylindrical system. Find the distance between A and B. In cylindrical coordinates. Means A and B are in cylindrical coordinates. Some people are getting confused. They will find out the distance. They will do all such things. And once again, they will try to express in cylindrical coordinates. Means A and B are in cylindrical. Find out the distance. So, this, these two are in cylindrical. First, convert them into Cartesian. A Cartesian and point B in Cartesian. Then find out the distance. Apply distance formula. The scheme I will show you. You can see here. Two points A and B, convert them. We know x equal to rho cos phi. Find out A from cylindrical to Cartesian. 0, minus phi, 0, we got it. From B, this is cylindrical, 0, phi, 10. Applying the same formula. If you find out point A and point B in Cartesian, so you will get 3 marks. Then, we, it is asked to calculate the distance between points A and B. So, first find out the distance vector, R, A, B. So, find out A, I have point A, I have point B. So, 10 A, Y plus 10 A, Z. So, find out the magnitude under root of 10 square plus 10 square, right? So, 14.14. So, if you do this, 2 marks, 3 plus 2, 5 marks, right? This is the distribution. 
so after this some people have done some other thing insulin they are they, are, uh, they have not understood the question properly okay part b so transform a vector y a x plus x a y plus x square by root of x square plus z from cartesian this is in cartesian convert it into cylindrical right so from cartesian to cylindrical so this is the cartesian vector a cartesian i have written a cylindrical a row into a row plus a phi find out a row a phi a z and substitute so a row is equal to a cartesian into a row right a cartesian is this a row you multiply do all such things so you'll be getting 2 rho sin phi cos phi a rho similarly for a phi you will get rho cos square phi minus rho sin square phi a z no need to find out it will be same rho cos square phi right so substitute a rho a phi a z if you find out a rho a phi a z you will get 4 marks and if you substitute a rho a phi a z in this equation 2 and express it you will get 1 mark 4 plus 1 5 marks right and some people uh, still they have kept in uh, x y z if so we know what is x x equal to rho cos phi y equal to rho sin we know the conversion from cartesian to cylindrical you have to substitute all those things right then question number 2a you can also unmute yourself and speak to me parallelly if you want okay derive the expression for electric field intensity e due to uh, infinite line charge lying along z axis yes for this first diagram is required diagram first draw the diagram so that you show that infinite line charge is lying along z axis for that one marks then what is the differential electric field intensity due to this differential length of the line charge you will write and z component vanish so z because of symmetry write down that you have to write down all the statements that is one mark the next the total e due to infinite line charge integrate from minus infinity this is if you write right then limits change the limits of integration so after changing this is one mark and final answer one mark e royal by right the steps stepwise marks will be there right so question number 2b i for this i know people have copied but uh, if you copy this i have the solution of it but this is wrong if you write like this this is hint they have given this is see question number 4 to be 410 nano coulomb positive charges are located in z equal to 0 plus corners of square of 8 centimeter so people have copied from this i know they, you have the solution you have copied from this you have maki ka maki no means means same thing whatever they have written you will write the same thing if you have written maximum are given two marks not five if you have written this answer by referring to the solution manual you will get only two marks because this is not the solution just they have explained it and given the hint that's all right so if you have written maki ka maki the same thing i will maximum you will get two marks so how to solve it i will i will show you here so question number 2b first we have to draw the diagram four corners of a square yes you can i have taken here one at the origin another at zero minus eight zero you can take anywhere but you do it correctly right but first draw the diagram showing the square and fifth charge is at the center means from a b c d i have called from a to e it should be same distance b to e means it should be exactly at the center along z axis so find out this height so we have found out the height here everything we have done so drawing the diagram correct the diagram one marks then all the charges are equal q equal to q a q b q c q d q e you have to show this 10 nano columns then the total force acting on the fifth charge here one minute total force acting on this fifth charge at point e due to other four charges so add them first charge f a e plus f b e plus r f 1 plus f 2 plus f 3 plus f 4 you have to write the formula without formula how you will do i don't know right you have to show this total amount of force acting on the fifth charge is given by uh, sum of all the forces acting on the charges due to the charge present at a b c d then since the distances are same so q is also same so q1 q2 by 4 pi epsilon r square into ar right so q1 q2 means q square because qa equal to qb right q square by 4 pi epsilon r square into ar ar is nothing but due to this first a a e a b e a c a d so what is a a e the vector r a e by r so r a e by r r r r square into r r q take it out r a e plus find out r a e r b e r c e r d e so this is how so then substitute in this formula after substitution they will get cancelled so finally you will get 3.9 or 39.7 in 10 power minus if it is 3.9 3.9 into 10 power minus 4 az newton then magnitude it is us so this is the thing if you do this then you have not understood the problem just you have copied from this solution 
so if you understood you will do in this way if you understood you will do in this way draw the diagram clearly and you will do if you do all the steps you will get five marks for each and every step i given the marks i will share the uh, video also and also the scheme next question number three uh, calculate the total this is already done you know already the same problem has been asked so this diagram are very much essential you have to draw the diagram so first one is 0.2428 micro column first part a one marks then part b two marks part c two marks right this is already done i solved it then question number 3b derive the expression for electric flux density d due to coaxial cable using gauss law yes this also derivation has been done so the mass split up diagram yes diagram is one mark clear diagram you have to show which is rho s inner rho s outer q inner q outer radius a radius b radius rho all those things gaussian surface everything then do all the steps so finally you will get this after this people have written rho s they have shown the relationship between rho s outer and rho s inner it is not as if you have done the extra step i have deducted one marks if i stopped here i have given full marks right because it is not as the relationship between rho s inner and rho s outer the surface charge density is between the inner and outer cylinders if you have done extra step one marks is deducted if you stop here you will get full marks that is the way i have adapted that is the evaluation i have done okay i will stop here if any doubts are there you can ask i'll stop recording also